Okay, so I'm just gonna jump on in. It's like 322, 223. That number I see a lot. That's one of my numbers, 223 and 322. It's weird. Like you'll have certain, like I have certain numbers, but I have a lot. Like there's a lot of communication with me through numbers. Um, but anyways, um, you know, last night has just been weird anyways. Well, it's still tonight. It's not last night yet. <laughs> Tonight is weird. Um, I was up at one one one. Um, it, it was weird too because uh, Stella was in the room with me. Like, I don't know. I swear to God, everything is so weird. And there's some fucking giant entity in my fucking bedroom that's huge, and I have to keep ignoring it. It's so fucking huge. It's like overshadowing. It's like you're walking, and all of a sudden there's this giant shadow over you. It's like what the fuck. Okay, fuck off. I'm ignoring this shit. I'm not going to give up my energy. So, um, I don't know if it is disrupting my sleep. Sometimes it's like, you know, are they there to interact? Like, are they like, are they waiting for me to go to sleep to talk to me? Like, what the hell? Um, or, you know, are they there to harass me? There's some things where I feel like it's, um, like censorship or something like where I felt before, like the men in black have come like they're monitoring. And, and I think they can pick up like they can pick up on our vibration or our frequency or something like they can know like who's awake and who's communicating out there and stuff. So, you know, I think that there's so many, it's overwhelming, like they can't keep up, but it definitely, you know, luckily the numbers are on our side is <laughs> that is why it has to be this way. Uh, it had to be so many that would be waking up, uh, it, it, they wouldn't be able to control it because, you know, they want to control, they want to keep everybody low vibration. <clears throat> so as soon as, you know, there have been breakout high vibration people who've tr come in to try and change things, they've, um, you know, shut it down, murdered them, flipped their car or whatever, get red necktied, it's all sorts of shit. So anyway, and they're doing this shit right in front of us right now. Like I'm going to really go on a uh, lost step on Hawaii. It is like, it just is getting bigger and bigger. And it's so much a part of so many things. But there was a few other things I want to talk about too. But back to the tonight. So when we went to bed, it was like 8.30. And I was like, she had already gone in the bedroom. It was, I could hear her snoring. And I was sitting down here and I was looking at um, TikToks. But my hands will start hurting really bad with my phone. Like I've, I've been talking about that for a long ass time, especially since they turned on this 5G thing on my phone. Then I started saying it like hurts my hands. And, uh, and then that guy I got the, I'm telling you, I knew that there is a, it's affecting them. And so I, um, and see right now, I can feel it hitting into like all of this shit that they are fighting. God, I'm so sick of this shit. I saw this person yesterday and she was like, okay, so if we're at the end of this, are we still being poisoned? Like, are we still being poisoned? Like, I want to figure that. It's like, fuck, same questions I'm always asking. Like, you know, where are we in this whole situation? I mean, we're obviously being penetrated by radiation. And, uh, you know, is it that, that the more that we can get into our minds, the more we can raise our vibration, the less it can affect us. And the more that we can realize we're fucking not this illusion, that we are beyond that, that we are a hologram. We have, you know, a lot more uh, control over it than what we think. And if that is a part of it for us, you know, because that definitely comes into my head all the time. And, um... And the best thing to me about my mind is that it's open. It's just open. Like it's been open my whole life. I didn't ever close it. And that was one thing why people would label me a lot as like ridiculous and gullible and stuff. Because there were so many things I would believe. 
Like, yeah, you know, when I was going around telling people aliens were real for my whole life, I never, never didn't not. I never was in denial of that. I was always saying, like, ghosts are real. I lived in so many haunted houses. Like, all of that stuff, I was always saying it was real. Fear, everything, it's all real. And uh, folklore, all that shit. And so, and if people would tell stories or something. Just the fact that the story of Bigfoot, my friend told, oh my God, you're so gullible. You believe anything. You know how many times I was told that? And then, you know, to get to 2020, like spend my whole life living this way. And they get to that point and then all of a sudden see, oh, it's all of them. They are all like programmed. They don't even know what the fuck. They're not even thinking for themselves. It's like they're cut off from themselves. It was like, it was such an aha moment. It really flipped, you know, like I already have had the flip in my own life, which I'll tell you another thing that's interesting. I'll just throw this in real quick is, is this guy, he was, I don't know his platform or any of that stuff. The way his approach was that it seemed that it was something he talked about often and he is a spiritual communicator of some sorts. Uh, he's, you know, trying to guide people or whatever. And so he was saying you know, everybody who's talking about the event right now, the solar event, the thing that was freaking people all the way out back in 2016, like I said, it was the first thing that I heard about where I started panicking, feeling like I had to wake people up. And it wasn't even waking them up to all of the stuff now. Like, fuck, 2016, like, uh, I mean, I've gone through some stuff, like, <laughs> Like, there was no Epstein, like, uh, flight logs and stuff. Like, there, this has been such a roller coaster. So, anyways, the, um, uh, all the way back then, people were already panicking about that. And the things I was waking up to was just, it was like this control over us or something. Like, I was waking up and I was seeing things that didn't look real. And so that was freaking me out, like where things looked three dimensional and that was tripping me out. But then um, is when I started realizing like they're charging us for land. How can, how, who sold them the land? Where did they get, how do they sell us the earth? How is that possible? And, uh, you know, where I was like, oh my God. Did you know people don't murder just because the Bible says so? Like, there's legitimately people who do not murder because the Bible tells them not to. That, that, when I, and I don't even know where it came from. Like, these are those kinds of things that they're just giving you this information. They just, like, slide it in home base right there. Like, they're just whispering. And one thing, too, that I've noticed, like, as you're working on your own um, communication is why I can talk to them so much. Like as yesterday, I was noticing, I was sitting there, I was, I don't even know why. It was something obviously they wanted me to, to point out to me. But so while I was sitting there, you know, having these conversations, because a lot of people would be like, oh, you're just talking to yourself. But it is, you recognize different voices and different tones. You'll recognize, you'll start recognizing and so to me, I can hear, like I can override, like I can, it is like a familiar voice. It's like, it's like a, a, you could be a mom at a party and there could be tons of noise at a party. You know, it's this kid's birthday party and your baby is back in the back room sleeping and your baby wakes up and starts crying and the mom can tune in and hear that sound through all the other sounds because of her it's like a frequency or something like you're tuned into it like you can hear it you've heard it before you know it, it, it you know and that is how these voices are to me and they will have just straight up conversations like where I'm like working through things they're telling me things explaining things to me and stuff but it, um it's definitely like a whispering. It's like a low tone. 
but it's like you can hear it through all the other noise, especially uh, to me, it feels like my mind just kind of sits back there waiting or something. Like when you get out of the thing of being so caught up in all of the drama and the 3D, you know, and you really see through how childish and ridiculous it is and getting caught up in stuff that doesn't matter. It's just like, and that's when you start becoming like observer. It kind of, to me, for my own personal thing, it kind of went along with the forgiveness forgiveness was such a huge thing like the dark night is horrible and hard but it is such a relief to your spirit like it is so purposeful it is um so don't fear it and there's a lot of people who say you know you have more than one and um you know because you go it's all stages of healing and, you know, so use each one that comes up, you know, to your really the best you can improve it every time, you know, really go into it like, oh, fuck, you know, something's coming up. I'm about to really get into it. I'm about to really figure myself out here. I'm about to really dive in, you know, and release stuff, like treat it like you enjoy it or something like it's something good and go into it as, a, you know, like a, a recognition that you're going to be releasing stuff, even if, and it's going to be pain. You're releasing pain. You got to release it. You got to process it. You got to let it go. So you're going to feel it. And, um, but, um, let me think. Cause it was like a, a but it was like a tornado was going in there for a second. It was like, wait, what? Um, uh, so anyways, you want to, um, as the stuff is coming up, as things come in, you, you can be productive in the dark night. It doesn't have to be horrible. Like I can't say for positive, it's going to be different for each person, but uh, you could turn it into a more positive experience when you really understand what's going on. I think like, I don't know that I knew when I had mine. You know, I had been going through so much with the brain injury and just like, it, it just changes everything. It changes all these relationships. Like it changes your attitude. It changes your reality. Like everything changes. And so, you know, I was going through so much stuff already. Um, you know, I, it was like multiple dark nights. It was just like being hit one thing after another. So, but the, the main one, the one where it was like that cold winter, the one that changed everything, the one that to me changed everything because it was after that was when I got my trigger. Things really started changing dramatically. I'm sure things were changing dramatically in the first part of it. Uh, there was so much going on, um, but, you know, things got started improving after the 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 long cold winter one where I died I was on medicine my dog died my husband had left me it was just like oh my god it was just horrible oh my god I was so down in that fucking stair thing I had that tall stair thing and oh my gosh it's all I could see was me hanging from it and it's like they'll taunt you too you know oh look here's the easy way you don't have to feel it anymore. Oh, look, you could take your pain away here. Two seconds. All that pain will go away. Yeah, but then the bummer is, then you get to the other side. And then you're like, oh my God, are you fucking kidding me? I gave up again. I know that that's what happens to so many people. So many people who uh, kill themselves. Like we get told, like it's the biggest sin. Even though now it's like government line up. <laughs> Uh, but it used to be the biggest sin in the whole wide world. And so, um, and we were told, you know, that they're definitely going to hell. Like if you had a relative or anybody who killed themselves, like forget about it, they're in hell. And so, uh, <laughs> just the, the idiocracy, the lunacy that goes behind some of this shit. Like, well, you know, you're doing everybody a favor. So really do you go to hell if you're doing everybody a favor? <laughs> You know, you are kind of a burden to society. You know, you never eat anything, you know, anorexic. So you're a real problem for us. So 
get in there. Uh, I don't, I don't know that. Um, it's, but after, um, <clears throat> that, when I started being able to <coughs> see myself, you know, it was like a, a huge, a, a huge release to see myself, you know, um, especially having all girls, you know, uh, they make sure, you know, everything wrong with you. And uh, so, uh, throughout, you know, they had already hurt my feelings so many times and, uh, you know, there's, there's a whole scenarios that play out. Like there's a whole, there's a whole script to our lives. So, you know, so many things play out. So many things are said to you by so many different people. Like it's a whole thing. Your lessons are huge. They go with the lessons before and after they go with all of it is an expansion of what you're learning all the time. It just depends on how you approach life. And so when, um, when I could see myself and it's like, I can look back at myself. I can see her. She's like a separate individual. It's like the same thing as like, I can look back and I can see my little kid self and uh, like, I could have them come over and sit down at the table and they're separate from me. They're not, they're not the same as me. They are different. Even though they were a part of my lesson, just as the same as my mom is as a part of me, but she's not me. But it's also just so trippy is how often you're doing something and you'll all of a sudden feel like your parent. I think that is a, was such a trippy phenomena, but, um, I don't know what it all is. It's gotta be something about the connection that, that we, uh, that we are, but that we don't really understand but like we're an expression, an extension. It's like we are the, it's like, you know, when I talk about the big bubble, like I can see that a lot as like a, an energy source, the big bubble. Somebody blows this big bubble and it's out there in the air and it's iridescent. It's all full of all color and shimmer and shine and it takes all shapes and form. But then it is the consciousness of the bubble expresses and goes into express self then all the things that becomes itself everything that led to itself is a part of that expression so you, it's like all your parent everybody is a part of that expression it's a part of who you are it's a part of your physicality it's all a part of your representation of yourself and so it's all expressed through it. I love that bubble um, visual too. It just, it, it, it is so, uh, to me, it just makes so much sense. But see, when things don't make sense, that's where you got to really get in your communication so that you can, because they'll give you pictures and thoughts that will make sense to you. And so anyways, you know, um, but in that part where you start really understanding yourself, like I can look at my prior self, uh, the one, you know, who hurt my daughters, who was selfish, who was a workaholic, who was way too uh, needy or like, it was like a desperation. I think a lot of women who are too much in their feminine out of balance in that way is like a desperation of needing that masculine energy. So, uh, you know, as though I was way out of balance, you know, I, I, and I had no idea, like the world doesn't tell us. And, um, but the people around us tell us, but we're fighting the people around us because of our own, um, our own ego, our own, our, our own un not understanding what we're doing here. So, you know, we've been coming at it backwards this is upside down as this world is has been our approach and so it's time that we are flipping things right side up you know we got to see we got to witness we got to understand so that we can flip things up we can be like okay well that doesn't know it has to go that way why would we do that and uh, you know because we're that smart we can figure it out so we can change things <laughs> so we don't have to stay trapped uh, the, you know the the trapping 
uh, is a choice. You choose to stay in ignorance. You choose to stay in the dark. So, and it's a choice, you know, that a lot of people can make because they don't want to face themselves. But anyway, that to me, it is an important part. When you can get to that part of forgiving yourself, then you start forgiving others because, you know, like, well, how can you expect all these people to know stuff before they know it? Like, they're here to learn just like I'm here to learn. So, you just get into this like, oh my gosh, it just such a release, such a release, but it's a process, you know, it's a process. I mean, just what last week, I think is when they gave me the little nugget about, um, you know, you're not here to try and get people to do what you want to see through your eyes to, you know, that's not why you're here. You're here to learn to sit back and allow people to be themselves and get comfortable with it. That's why you're here. And so, you know, it's always an expansion. You're, you're always getting more. The more that you can understand, the more you can comprehend, the more that you can receive. And everything that we're, um, you know, we're working on because we're leaving the dark and going into the light. So it is all of that expansive energy of you becoming like, you know, it's like you're becoming a beautiful. It's like, it's like everybody, there's so many people who look like the landscape of La, Lahana right now. And, but uh, we're going to, um, you know, you're going to change that. You're going to turn it into a beautiful garden. And, you know, this is the thing too. Like the Hawaii thing is, um, uh, is, it just gets bigger and bigger, man. You know, what's crazy is like, I remember being in school and them making such a big deal about Hawaii all the time and Hawaii becoming a state. And I remember it so specifically. And um, I'm thinking, man, they haven't even been a state that long. So we went and looked it up. And it said in 1959. And so it was just a few years before I started school. Because I was born in 61. And so they had only been a state for a short time. But then when you learn about the history and stuff. But it is so representative. Like this whole Hawaii thing is so multi-level like it's it's like the gift that just keeps on giving uh, to this awakening it's crazy uh for one of the things that is just like is um the tourist thing it is crazy like what in the holy hell so you've got all these people who've already got their trips planned. There's people who were there. There's people getting off the goddamn planes this morning, coming on their trips. Like, how cut off are you from the world to go to a place that's in the middle of a disaster that is an isolated island that has limited resources and you're going to just go mosey on up in there? Like, the ego, the entitlement, the, like, it's just, it's on fucking steroids. It's crazy. This is, like, that perfect thing. Everything is a dilemma. Everything is the question, who am I? Who am I? What do I do when the, when this happens? What do I do when this happens? And there was, uh, I, apparently, the next morning, there was, uh, you know, dead bodies floating everywhere in the ocean. Um, and there's um, snorkelers. Just out there on a, you know, one of those snorkel groups, you know, you go on vacation and, oh, well, we want to go snorkeling. Oh, we'll pay and go with this group. And they're just, you know, I don't, just business is normal. Nothing to worry about here. Oh, don't mind that dead body. There was a fire here the other day. Oh, don't worry about that. Which, you know, there's people pointing out, it's, uh, isn't that crazy how it was on 8-8? Uh, you know, the big Lionsgate portal date or the, the date, uh, there's a significance. Like there's a, all of the things, um, you know, all the things going on are significant, everything. And the Hawaii thing, besides the fact of bringing up this whole, like a moral issue in people, uh, um, and one of them, this one is just, it's atrocious. 
It's like this girl has got to like, oh, this girl is just not thinking for herself. It's like, oh my gosh, people get so, well, it's my vacation. Life well, plan this vacation. It's like, is it that hard to change it? Like my big old 60th birthday thing, remember, I was going to go to the Keys and I, I bought all these swimsuits. We had our plant. We had all our stuff. We were going and then the hurricane came. So it was like, oh, well, cancel that. It's like, what? It, I don't understand people. Like, it, it's so weird. Oh, well, it's the middle of the disaster. We better hurry and get there. Like, how many people were getting off when the towers were going down and they just kept on coming? Oh, let's just go. Let's go. It's like, oh, my gosh. Was it even an issue? Because New York is a big old vacation spa, big tourist location. So, um, you know, how did it affect tourism? Did they shut it down? I don't remember. I don't remember anything about any of the stuff that was going on then. And I lived in completely opposite ends of the uh, country. So, you know, I don't know. But the way that people just keep going and going and just acting like nothing is sickening. But the woman who was on the news, it was a young girl too. She's maybe 30, 30 to 35 or some age. And um, she uh, was really mad. They wouldn't let him get on the plane or something. They wouldn't, they they canceled the flights or something, finally. And some of them, some of them are still apparently landing. And, um, uh, but, you know, it's not all just Americans. Uh, you know, there are people go from every place to Hawaii. So it can be all these different countries and who knows what countries don't even know what's going on, you know, because they're not telling the truth and not giving all the news or lying about uh, so much, especially how many people have passed. So the, uh, so the, um, let me think back where I was. Oh yeah. So the girl at the airport, so she, um, she was getting mad, like, then the news was asking her, you know, well, what do you think, or whatever. And she starts saying, well, we we are from Reading, and we were in the Reading fire, remember? And it was bad, and it was right across the street from me. I could see the flames. So we've already gone through this, and now they're just canceling uh, their trip, or, you know. It's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What? Like I, 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 there's been so many California fires. I don't even know which one that she's talking about. I mean, there's been a lot of horrible ones, but you, you know, you weren't affected. So how dare the people who are affected have any kind of thing? You, how many people you think, if all of your friends and family had lost everything and we're all dead, uh, you know, you maybe I have a different attitude, and you know, if you didn't. You know, uh, like, it, it's crazy. This one girl who, her, her job, of course, is in tourism because, like, that's how a lot of the people have jobs there to um, be able to even survive. And what's so crazy, okay, so this was the night, like, you know, like, tribes are all around. All right, well, they've done everything they can to continually break down the tribes, you know, um, it wouldn't even surprise me if they were going and flying over the Amazon, finding them and still going in and trying to break those ones down. <clears throat> you know, it's like they see it as an infest infestation to their ultimate plan. Yeah, they're crazy. Uh, I don't know the, the habitat control world that they're trying to create. But so, you know, they want all these tribes to be dismantled and stuff and their lands taken. And it's, uh, you know, when you understand God's law, then it's different. And tribes understand God's law. And man's law wants to try and override God's law. But tribes don't want to hear that. But that is why they have to, uh, you know, get a more civilized, you know, program them, indoctrinate them so that they you know, change their attitude. So, you know, this battle for Hawaii has been going on and those people who are the natural islanders, they're, um, you know, that's their 
lands that they have been living on for, you know, centuries. They've all, this is where they were born. This is where they, you know, it was their God-given place to tend, to care for, to create, to, and this is what I'm talking about is where we're going to end up having these different kinds of areas to go, like where the people are going to go back to creating their, their true environment, you know, their, their real world that they want. And so as if these other people hadn't destroyed it, you know, I, I, I can't say for sure though, what is going to be with, because to me, I just go back to that map that the government put out, which, you know, it could be PSYOP, it could be, but I don't know. I mean, there's been some big changes that go right with that map. And I really have always believed in the looking glass and them always wanting to be two steps ahead of us. And they can do that because they have looking glass. Like, they know shit. And so, I would um, um, go, I, I go by that map, you know. That's what I go by. And so, anyways, um, but, so there's a whole thing with the farmers. And it used to be, you know, I mean, they were their own place. They were these islanders who had their own place. They were in charge of it. They had their own king or uh, whatever, their own person who was in charge, just like what we're going to go back to is more individual. We're not going to go to big government. We're going to, the big government's being dismantled and exposed to us. Like we're supposed to be seeing like how toxic it is and how bad it's been for us and the roots of it, where it comes from and why, you know, how they distorted this world with their man's law and telling us that was the only law where uh, getting people to not realize, no, God's law overrides all things. And uh, so those islanders that were born to that place, that's their place, that's their lands. And um, so they were self-sufficient. They didn't need any other place. They had everything they needed right there. Well, so when the corporation is uh, how I'm going to look at it, you know, the overlord, overlords who have expressed themselves through corporations at this point, the the overlords, that they, they don't like that. They want control. Like, well, that's a pretty sweet-ass place. You know, we need that place. You know, we need that those lands and so when they went in and started taking it over I, there's some history videos you can see like people are putting out so many videos about this stuff and so I can't like repeat all the stuff verbatim but like an overall but there's a lot to look into and so and that's what I had said there's going to be the places are going to be hit there's a there's a history there there's a reason why certain places are going to have certain things go on just because it happens at one place remember doesn't mean it's going to automatically happen anywhere else it's individual stories individual storylines playing out and a big part too is like i've seen videos where you know like young girls crying like yeah, and young men too and they're so overwhelmed trying to help the people you know we're not professionals we don't know what we're doing and stuff but remember what i said this is making me i get all emotional remember what i said last week i think it was i think i've said it a bunch of times but these uh, these disasters and stuff make heroes out of people so people who don't know their own abilities. They don't know what they're made of. They don't know what all that they can do until something like this happens. And then they show the world. And so um, there's beautiful transformations happening there. And um, uh, another thing, you know, you have all these people, you know, pointing out all these rich people who have property there. And I don't know what each of the rich people is doing. You know, lots of people in order to even be there had to be rich. And so, uh, you know, a lot of rich people should be jumping in 
and helping, but also, you know, they also need to stand back and not be the center of the story. So they need to allow, um, you know, these, these situations are very difficult, especially because you have so many people donating, but now the FEMA and Red Cross are setting that stuff aside and saying that they can't take the things that they don't go directly through them. So all this stuff that is being sent over from all the other islands, all the people around the other parts of the city and stuff, they're taking massive amounts of stuff. They've closed off roads. They won't let people go through. They are um, not giving them the supplies. They're not giving them the water, not giving them anything. It's, it's, uh, uh, but what did I say? They said, I said, they're going to be in total control, in total control. Whether these people eat, they're, it's all about control. So, um, uh, and there's uh, so many horrific stories, so many, oh yeah, the one tourist lady stuff, she said that she, uh, you know, she's going through this horrible thing, she's got a friend, her best friend, both her kids lost their houses, and uh, so, you know, they're just going through all this devastation and stuff, and then she said, you know, and then you have these people calling you, who uh, she said one of them was a man who was so mad that his snorkeling had got canceled and that they needed to get it fixed right now. Uh, people calling and saying, well, um, uh, could you make sure and have my husband a fancy birthday cake? You know, this is a big special trip for us and stuff. Just people just completely oblivious, just completely cut off, not even thinking about anything but themselves because uh, it shows you know, who and what you are on the inside so you can see because, you know, I, I don't know. I like uh, you obliviously go over there to that and go do that trip and be a burden to that whole community, take their resources and then leave and go home and then have it pointed out to you, like the humiliation that you would feel, like all the stuff that you did and you didn't see and stuff. It is, um, but you know, there's a reason why all of these things are playing out the way they play out. And it is to impact the soul. Uh, and it's to, it's all to clean up other things. It's other things that from other lives. So it, it's all like an entanglement. And so the, um, the, Okay, so you have the young people who are, oh yeah, okay, so uh, one of the things is, yeah, so they have a whole alarm system for tsunamis and whatnot, um, but it just so happens that all the officials were gone. Everybody was gone on a trip at the same time or at a meeting or something on another island, like everybody was gone. So for some reason, nobody could just, you know, the alarms wouldn't be set or wouldn't work because there's nobody there. Everybody's just gone. So normally they have them for tsunamis and stuff like that. So no alarms went off. A lot of people don't even have cell phones apparently. And all they did was send a cell phone message out to evacuate five minutes before you were engulfed in flames. So at the same time, people are getting the messages and trying to run they that's how and they had the roads blocked off so they were controlling the evacuation and making sure that people got blocked in so they couldn't get out when you look at the map and stuff and what people were saying it's horrific and then when you see the the road and then when i saw the videos of people in their cars it was horrible it was absolutely terrifying and so many of those people had to run and jump out of their cars like houses and shit are exploding. They're having to run out of their cars and jump into the water, throwing their kids in the water. And um, so there's uh, tons and tons of people that were in the water, but there was tons that, that drowned too, that didn't make it. So there's a ton, the body count is way, the people are saying like, it's so, it's huge. There's a tons of people who are, um, dead. They're pulling dead people out all the time. All the cars have got dead people in them. <clears throat> They're going in house by house. And so, uh, a big part of the tragedy is how many old people were in their houses and couldn't get out because like didn't have cell phones, didn't know anything was happening. 
it happened so fast and all the kids that were at home alone while their parents were at work. So all these little kids and stuff that were home. So there's uh, tons and tons, all the pets and stuff in the area. So there's just this huge tragic thing that is happening. And, um, and then also what the history of the thing is. So the town, of course, the main one, uh, well, I know they, they hit was, um, a holdout. Like they wouldn't sell out to the overlords. They wouldn't give up their land. This was property that their ancestors had owned. So all if like nobody could afford to live there, but this was like their grandparents, grandparents house. Like these were uh, generational homes that people had been in. This was um, a historical part of the community. And it was um, like, it has such strong roots to the indigenous people. And it was so many of their homes, but homes that cannot be replaced. And what is so sickening and that is how, you know, how the government works is going in and um, taking that land now and saying it's not safe for anybody to be there. So they'll say, well, it's not safe. We got to come in. We're going to have to clean it. So the government's going to take this land away from all the people. Good what they do. And so, uh, you know, when it used to be that they were completely self-sufficient and then the overlords step in and start messing with it, they start doing things to the farmers, they start, all sorts of stuff start going down. And then they um, started exporting. So then they started uh, taking the people's food and, and then they started forcing, like they, if they were buying the farmland or something, but forcing all of it to be sugar cane and pineapple or something. And so they were, um, they just got everything out of whack, just like what they do. Everything's got to be in harmony and balance. They start putting things out of whack. They started driving businesses out, farmers out, took over control. And then, you know, these people who wouldn't sell, uh, their land and and plus there's the whole thing about the energetic chakra system of where um, the place is at and so it's like an attack on it's an attack on, on God's law attack on like God's beings it's attack on like like it's a spiritual attack uh, you know them taking this from these people like it's all this is not happening hundreds and hundreds of years ago where we just you know we don't know this is happening right in front of us they're doing this shit right in front of us and, and there's people who just you know when we go on vacation and the tourism hurts hawaii they have um uh it, it is driven the cost up for the people who are native to the island and so it's driven the cost up on them. They have appropriated their culture. They um, uh, they took their lands and started just putting in resorts and all of the stuff that none of those people wanted. Like they, uh, they were living a completely different life. And then the corporations just come in and take over. And uh, it's, it's just so destructive. It's just like the movie, The Avatar. And so, anyways, there's, uh, you know, a lot going on. Uh, you know, it's like for the individual place. It's for, you know, there's a whole energy there that has to be, like, cleared. And then there's all the parts for us to be able to see. All the parts that people are playing out for them to see themselves. Like, it's just, there's so much, so many levels that are going on in everything. But, um... Uh, you know, for the people who think like to just keep going on vacation, it's like they're so cut off. They don't even care about uh, the people, the the people who they, you know, claim to care so much about. They care so much about the islands and stuff like that. But it's, uh, I don't know. It's like people just don't, people just don't get things at a deeper level and they don't look at things at a deeper level they don't even look at it as like 
these tribes, these are these people's uh, land and they're fighting. They're fighting for their rights. They're fighting for their lands. They're fighting for their lifestyle. They're fighting for their culture. And, uh, you know, uh, we just want to know, you know, how, how much it's going to cost to stay at the Hilton or something. It's like we don't, we're so cut off. And we're so super, our society is so superficial and artificial. At the same time, we have real battles going on. It all comes down to God's law or man's law. And man's law can't come in and override God's law. But so many people just don't have any respect for God. That's why they distort God and people's view of God. God is the creator. What you think of as God is the creation, the universe. It is the it is a, an example, an expression. It is um you know, it's not like one person up there. It is all things. And so um it's weird how people are so cut off from it when it's all things and they are more attached to the darkness which is limited you know it's not all things it's it is a, a contained it's like a contained energy and so i don't people have to that's why the whole thing is like people have to do it for themselves it has a big important thing everybody has to do it for themselves that's why even with the awakening and all that. That's why you can't wake people up. It's so crazy how much that frustrates so many people too. That they can't wake people up. Like everybody, when they wake up, it feels like it's their duty. It's like you have to help people wake up. You know, you've got to get them to see. And then people get so frustrated. And they start feeling attacked. And, you know, like, uh, because of the people, how they respond. And people will feel so... um you know, but it, it's like their duty. They have to wake them up. Then they'll get so frustrated. And, you know, you can't wake them up. They refuse. They don't care. They won't even look at my stuff. It's like because they can't see it. They're not supposed to wake up yet. It's impossible. You cannot wake somebody up. You know, I, I just feel like I've had so many examples of different things that people would tell me. But I couldn't see it until I saw it. And it's going to be the same for all these people. But that part is going to impact everybody in its own way. So it's a, a, that plays a huge part. You know, all of these parts fit together perfectly to make the picture. There is no chaos. There is nothing that happens by accident. There's nothing that we can control. And it's all, you know, happens the way it's supposed to happen. And, um... Um, let me think. As I finish talking about that whole thing, um, there's just been so many horrible stories of people trying to save their um, their kids and stuff. Like, ah, uh, and now it's just such a disaster. But they're still. I mean, they're in a fucking battle. Uh, the government's coming in and not giving them supplies. The government's going to fucking tell them, oh, yeah. And then they got this stupid-ass Oprah. And it was crazy how many people were doing videos. And they were like, you know, well, when's Oprah going to show up? You know, she bought all that land. So she bought like 850 acres that, um, you know, is prime stuff. There's this, when they start going through the list of all these billionaires who went over there and bought all this land up because they are trying to turn it into, there's already been a whole thing about making it a 15 minute city. It's like they want to make it a super fancy one or something, you know, a resort island, you know, like how much would they charge people to go and live in that 15 minute city, you know? So they're trying to uh, do that. So that's a whole part of it too these overlords, what they have been doing. Um, and they are about to have like another summit or something like they're really pushing on this. And then they just go in and burn down 
And so, well, they'll rebuild it. Hell yeah, they'll rebuild it. They'll rebuild it the way they want. They'll take away this land, say it's too toxic. They fucking build neighborhoods on toxic land. Are you fucking kidding me? It's a game. There's nothing about that. And the people have got to stand up. The people have got to say, no, you're not taking our lands. The people, the, all the people who live in that community, they should be going out there and tying it off and putting up no trespassing signs. And the government can't cross that. It's like fucking um, like a vampire in the mirror. They can't cross that no trespassing. And the people who own those lands need to get out there and claim their lands. They can't because the government's going to try and wave their dick in their face and take them from them. And I always say, oh, well, the EPA, the FDA, the CIA, the, they've, all, they've all said it's toxic. It's dangerous. We can't allow you. We are here for you. We can't allow this, you know. Fuck you. That's what I'd say. I'd be out there, big guarantee. I'd be getting all my friends from my neighborhood block and be like, fucking let's rope this shit off and hang up some signs. No trespassing. Keep the fuck off my land. And um, they got to push back. Got to push back on these people. Because they are, you know, they trying to, man's law. <laughs> well, well, we say it's not safe. <laughs> we we say it's not safe. Well, you know, I'll go to God. You know, God will take care of it. I'm not worried about it. And uh, that is where, you know, uh, the beautiful flower comes up through the dirt and is uh, that energy when they put when they push back they got to stand up you know all these different places there has been a standing up to the overlords that has to occur it's like this energy of them always pushing pushing just like we're trying to push through this door and that we're pushing and pushing energetically and it's this the same thing where these people they've been pushing and pushing and it's going to go there's going to be a jolt they're going to all fall down whoever's pushing back on us they're going to all fall down so uh, the the hawaiians have the laws on their side right now they just don't know it like i've, I've seen so much stuff where i feel so sure that the republic um well, we're going into the Republic of America. So the Corporation of America has ended. And that ties a lot of hands. I think that ties a lot of judicial hands. So I think, because I keep paying attention to the stuff with the house, which I don't know. I mean, I could suddenly get served today. Like, I don't know. But, um, you know, uh, and with my ticket thing, and nothing has happened. And then... Um, with my uh, ex son in law, or my kids' grand, my my grandkids' dad, he, when he um, got arrested, and then they just put him out. Like everybody was looking up, they were expecting him to get you know ten years. <laughs> they were like, "Man, he's all like, what are we gonna do? Like everybody's trying to make this plan. Oh, what's gonna happen? What are we gonna do? What about the kid? Why? Why? You know all this stuff." And then he goes to court, and they're like, "Oh, go home." It's like, there was a lot of people who were disappointed. They were really wanting that jail time because, uh, for and I, well, I doubt it. it's true anymore. Used to be, if you were in jail, you couldn't get drugs. But now I'm sure that the uh, officers probably sell them in there. But, oh, and it's another thing in Hawaii who they're fighting too. The officers, you know, and people got to see these people are just following a script. They're not thinking for themselves. And uh, people who are going through these things, you know, it's waking people up. All sorts of people are being woke up there to the truth. Like, um, oh, yeah, so there's all these people, you know, wanting Oprah to come. Like, well, why isn't she here helping? And I kept being like, at first when I was hearing it, I didn't even know she had land. I was just like, what is everybody fucking talking about Oprah? Like, what the fuck? She's just coming right up there on the stage. So she has entered the main stage now. And so you have all these people, you know, who are, oh, they're so glad. Finally, finally she showed up with footage I seen. Where the fuck you think she is? 
She's right in there at the fucking evacuation center. I'm sure she's doing a little fucking head count. And fucking sending it out there to the... Oh, man. As the last motherfucking person you want at your goddamn fucking disaster. Like, wake up. That's what it's like. Oh, my God. But you see, like, how it's the awakening. Like, any, you know, what you got to awaken to then? Like, oh, yeah, we, we pulled out the devil to come out here and, you know, help us out with what to do. It's like, this is the fucking last person you want here. And she's right in there. Probably holding some little fucking orphans on her lap at this point. She's probably loading them up in her van. Well, I've got a nice room. I'll take them there to sleep. What happened to them? What do you mean? I don't, I don't know. I sent them back. Fuck. This is mental. Going on right right, right in front of us. Just right there. Just, nothing's being hidden. And, uh, and then uh, the people on the island who are definitely waking up to the media... Because the media is lying about everything, lying about what's going on, lying about head counts, lying about everything. And more fires keep breaking out. So, it's, you know, fuck. Like, I don't even, I don't even know. Like, uh, I just saw footage where there was supposedly a fire in Tacoma. Like, they're just going to keep seven fires everywhere. Like, there's a reason why they put out this all. Oh, we got a heat index. I saw somebody in Georgia, and they said it was boiling hot. It was so hot. And then all of a sudden, it just this cold front just rushes in. And they do that to, uh, and then you got the, all these tornadoes going and shit. <clears throat> they create these hot pockets and then hit them with a cold flash of wind and coldness because it creates huge storms. So uh, you're creating um, just these huge storms and it, it just keeps going and going like, I, uh, so, uh, uh, supposedly, um, there's stuff that Trump put out, like uh, everything's about to go down, but even when they keep saying it, it just goes and drags and drags and drags. But even though a lot of stuff is happening, I just, I am, I really don't think that things are ever going to really go fast. Like, I just feel like it's going to keep going slow, slow, slow. Uh, and, okay, so yeah, that solar flash thing. So that guy who was talking about the solar flash, he was saying um, it's not going to be in the physical reality. Like what we all think, like there's going to be this solar flash and it's going to be like we're going to all see it or something. He said that it's inside of us, that everybody has it inside of them. And if that's true, then I would have already had mine. I feel like I already had my solar flash. If that were true, but I don't know, um, you know, because so much of the stuff is um, like we put it into like a physical form so that we can understand it but you know how much stuff is just all things that are happening inside of us because we are the whole universe each of us is our own universe so if it is um you know i i don't i don't know uh, but the energy it's all the energy all has to do with it and the energy like right now like the, the, it's kind of, yeah, that's weird too. Cause Hawaii, there has been so much battle, so much war. And then, um, it is kind of like a last stand kind of energy. Like they're coming at us as hard as they can with everything they got. And Oprah's on fucking, she's right out front. So, got them next. They're gonna have fucking Gator and Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks CGI will show up. He'll be there to help out. Fucking Gator. He'll be there to feed the crowd. So who knows? <laughs> like, I want him for algae. He'll be there to bring in some medical treatment. <laughs> like, uh, uh, but. Anyways, um, so it is kind of like this last big stand, this bat last big battle. Um, but 
you know, how all the things just keep going. It's like, okay, well, we have a special counsel. We're going after this person. Then the special counsel starts, but it's all to show that this special counsel is corrupt. So it's like, well, shit. So that goes nowhere. So then we go to another one. And then we're all like, oh, okay, something's going to happen now. Oh, and that's to expose another criminal. It's like, oh my God, the amount of uh, criminals and stuff where there is uh, so many people who are now like, oh my gosh, uh, like our sheriff, our county commissioner, like every single person is being busted all for, you know, stuff you are giving them, stuff that has a, a stiff penalty at this point. So, uh, and that is what I had said. That is kind of like how they built community. They did it kind of community by community. And, um, yeah, that I was watching this movie yesterday. Oh, I got Brian Dennehy detective movie, which I was like, man, they really do do a lot of detective movies. Like, fuck, when you go through it, they've always got a detective for us. So, um, but it was a true story. And, um, was that the one with Brian Dennehy? Because, the the true story one um because there was the boston one is that the one that i'm thinking of uh but uh it show how they um build these communities up like there's so much corruption and there was so much with um god there was a lot with the irish and the italian when america um when they were starting, I don't even know all the different ones. I think there was a lot of shit with, uh, Chinese, but I think that they uh, tried to like enslave them. Like, I don't think there was probably a reason why there had to start being like, uh, Asian or Oriental or whatever, Chinese gangs or something. Cause there was a part where there was like a lot of different gangs from all these different cultures fighting each other. And, um, but anyways, the, um, uh, but when they, oh yeah, because whatever it was I was watching, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't that movie. It was a different one because, uh, sometimes I just put on all black and white movies and just let them go. Um, but it was, um, some guy with his business. Oh, it was the Elvis Presley movie. That's what it was. It was Elvis Presley, and it was, um, oh, man, what's the name of that? Um, I can't think of it. But so Elvis is supposed to be like a farm boy kind of thing in the, you know, like a blue-collar family. And so the dad, I don't know if he's a farmer or mechanic or something. And uh, so normally, you know, then the son would grow up and take over the dad's business and learn the skill and then his son, you know, it was always like that for forever. You know, if your grandpa was a shoemaker, you'd be a shoemaker. And so it was, um, you know, kind of just how things went. And then the overlords came in and offered an education and started destroying communities. And in this one, it was showing like even where the dad was like, no, you're not going to come and help me. You're not going to come to the shop and work with me. You're going to get your education. You're going to get, you, you'll never get ahead in life if you don't get an education. So they pushed that propaganda so strong where people became like, they need this education. They need this valuable piece of paper that is going to be everything for their future. And there was so many people like that were set they had a skill. They had like a, a whole, a whole thing. A legacy was being built for them by their family, and um, but people abandoned it and went for the education. And but they did it so much in so many small towns and stuff. At the same time, you know, they're going into places where there's tribes and destroying them, taking their people destroying and, you know, uh, herding them into controlled environments, going into mountain towns, convincing people that they need education rather than to just live their lives freely. And, uh, you know, like they could have so much more. Well, are you going to you know they ended up losing what they had 
You don't get more. You lose what you had. It's just a fucking scam to take what you got and to take away your power, take away your sovereignty. So going into these communities and just causing so much um, destruction, you know, and then anybody who they bought all the little mom and pop places. So they got the, all the people to be so de dependent on them. <clears throat> and then to be so wanting to participate in their education system, to be so convinced that it was necessary. And so it was just so much manipulation and so many people bought into it. But it was like the destruction of all things. And then once they got people in there and they started seeing, you know, like people like to be mean to each other. People like to make fun of each other. People like to be perverted. People like, so they started doing all of these things, you know, um, getting things out of balance and getting people to, you know, be more perverted and stuff and be more, um, and then the people, it's crazy too, like, um, like people who are all fetishy or perverted or whatever, they, you know, get all caught up in those, uh, hormones or whatever, and then they'll do something that they may feel super ashamed about, and they don't have those hormones overtaking them, and then they all of a sudden have to face that side of themselves and see like, oh my God, I'm a real sicko, aren't I? You know, and so then they end up feeling bad about themselves. But, you know, you can learn to not just follow all your impulses. Like, you don't have to just because something comes into your mind doesn't mean you have to automatically do it. You can control your impulses and always know that, you know, you just go with every single thing. You're going to end up feeling bad about yourself. You're going to end up feeling, you know, disgusted with yourself. This is what a lot of people, they think, you know, when they're overweight, that it's other people judging them that makes them feel bad. No, it's you judging yourself. You can't get away from your own judgment. You're in there telling yourself all the time. It, it, you're repeating messages that you heard before, but it's you who keeps it going. It's you who does that, who terrorizes yourself, who beats yourself down. But you have to recognize that. That's the uh, conscious awareness to become aware of your own toxic behaviors, of your own toxic self-talk, of, you know, uh, realizing, uh, you know, realizing it is how it changes. When you realize it and you make changes, you stop doing it. You start noticing. You start asking yourself, like, what, where did I come up with that? Why would I say that to myself? And, you know, then you start releasing. You go into it and figure out, like, why you say that to yourself. Why you talk to yourself that way. But that's why you're defensive. That's why you get triggered. It's because it's in you. It's not somebody else giving it to you. It's in you waiting to be seen, waiting to be heard, waiting to be recognized. And so, you know, it's um, important. And, you know, through all this stuff, you know, how so many people, they do just go down a rabbit hole and just get stuck in it. Just get stuck in um, not being able to you know, move out of it because there's so many, there's so many rabbit holes. Like you could just find yourself stuck anywhere at any point. There's so many horrific things. There's so many horrible things. But uh, to me, it is important to, you know, to witness, to be aware, to see, to understand what's happening in the world, but to not, but to also have perspective, you know, that spiritual perspective where you know the the reason everything's happening, there's a good reason. It's it's a rebalancing. It's everything was so heavy in the dark. We had to go and have these shifts. Things had to become dramatic so we could shift out of that energy and go into better times. But you know, it has to be this very heavy, you know, letting go of this stuff. There's a, there's a lot to transformation. There's a lot of releasing. And um, yesterday, my daughter, the um, one of my daughters called, uh, one that has um, the older of the two grandsons, 
they're only a couple months apart. But anyways, so she's um, my second daughter. And um, her husband, um, or, you know, not not government marriage, but, you know, once they're committed to each other, <clears throat> her partner, he um, he's uh, very into his community and he's an artist and he's well known in his community and stuff. And so his community has always been really important to him and he's gotten super involved in so many things. And um, it's so crazy because I can watch where people are directing their energy and it's like I can see what's coming and um you know he's gonna have a lot of really good things are gonna happen a lot of really positive things are gonna start happening for them and I can see it coming because I can see like it's weird how I can see things playing out um and you know you can tell somebody that and they'll just be like well you know I hope so but I I can really see you know, he's directing his energy and he's not being put off. He's not being put down. Like when things are going wrong, he just gets right back up and keeps going. That is that drive. You know, he's like, he's listening to his soul. He's being very driven by his own instincts. And that is so important. This is really important for everybody to get into that kind of thing right now. And you can't be focused on all the problems in the world and be focused on your own drive. You're, so it's, um, you know, I can see, uh, you know, ha where he's going is all this stuff is going to start going really cool. But so uh, they have a, another show thing coming up, another thing that's going to be coming up. I'm not even sure what this one is. Because they'll have art ones and different ones. Um, but this is... Um, um, because she called me and she said, well, you know, you can have a booth here, but I just have to have, you know, because she was showing, she's making stuff for her booth. And so she's going to go there and sell stuff. I'm so excited because she is so crafty. She's so good at making things. And, uh, you know, she just has to get that direction in her energy, you know, so that she is. Uh, so I'm really excited, you know, that she's doing that. But so she told me, well, you can have a booth there, but you can't talk about, uh, you know, you can't talk about what you talk about because this is to try and build up for election. Like we want to get people motivated to make change here. And um, I'm like, well, you know, I don't know if I'll come like, um, because it's like I am anti Elect, I'm anti-government, so I'm anti-election, but I do 100% believe in this small town, this small government thing that's going to be going. That is going to be the transferring. It, we're going to go into this small community where people are going to step up, and that is what I see happening. People are stepping up, stepping into roles, and trying to take communities in certain directions, and... Um, and he's got contacts that are, you know, he's making contacts and stuff like that. So I totally believe in that. That is where we're headed. It's the big government thing that is going away. And we're going to become smaller, you know, just like Hawaii was its own thing. It had its own, I think, I'm pretty sure it was a king, like an emperor or something from way back in their tribes, you know, like a family line is gone that probably way back a long time ago was the one who decided what should, babies they're women they're going to throw in the volcano to quiet it so all of the um you know there's there's just so much to all of the human lessons that have gone on on this planet and all of the and it is all opportunities to just look back and the movies to see oh you can learn that there you can learn that there so it is like, it's all these stories. Everything is like stories upon stories that you can learn from. And all the parts you play are inside of you. And, you know, but you're actively playing a part right now. You're actively in momentum of learning in this time, in this time structure. And so, um, oh, and time structure is kind of like, you're born and then you your ending time 
all that time between, that's your time structure. That is your unit, your unit of time, your unit of being alive in that time frame. So, and that time frame can be slotted in. Oh, that's so cool how it can just be in. It all depends on what you're trying to learn about and who you're learning it with. The people you come in to experience life with and the people you come in to learn from and learn with and it's um that's really that's really cool so the um uh what was i gonna say so when you are um uh there's uh man there's so many there's so many things like some kind of like lost here for a second like, that is a lot of, um, yeah, everything is so expansive. Like, it, it, when they, for me, when they show you things, it's just like, it just goes. It's just so huge. And all the things, like, like, the things of how they took over and stuff. It's like, it's just shown to me. Like, I can just see it. I can see how they uh you know brought in instigators to try and push back on different people and you know give these ranchers a little bit of money give them some land you know and then give them some power and it kind of is a natural thing then they start overpowering people so the communities kind of build themselves although there's always these overlords but I think that is kind of where they see us as this certain way that they look at us is because of how some people do just as soon as you give somebody an opportunity for power, just like that girl who I'd seen that video where she was looking at herself through that a filter and she said, oh my God, if I was really look like this, I would be doing some damage. You know, that, that is how people see it. Well, if I had the money, I'd be fucking everybody. Like all these people, just, uh, it brings the dark side, power and beauty and all of those kinds of things bring a really dark side out in people. And so, uh, you know, and how much people worship you know, like money and uh, idols and all of that kind of stuff. So all that energy has to be purged out. You know, people have to get to that. It is like lose everything and see what's important, you know. And, um, uh, you know, and uh, there's people who are there who are definitely saying, you know, really remember how temporary life is. You can lose your people in one split second. So many people have lost so much in one split second. And so, you know, that's always a reminder to us. It's um, like all these lessons are to reprioritize, to give us the values, you know, life, your time slot, your little period of time is, it's valuable, so much more valuable than what people are willing to give the value for it. So, um, Anyways, but when my daughter saying that, you know, I was like, well, I'm, I, I'm today, I'm going to crochet some stuff. I'm going to do something like that. I'm going to crochet a bunch of granny squares and I might make some of those hats. But also, um, she said for little like, uh, coasters. And so I'm going to give her a bunch of those, like she can sell them in her booth. I don't know that I'm going to go. And uh, I would like to go just to go and see, but I don't know, like, I <sighs> mean, I've got so many paintings. Like, if I went to go try and do a booth, like, oh, my God, I've got so many paintings and trying to gather them all up. There wouldn't even be room in the car for Stella. So, it just it doesn't seem like it's in the cards for me to do something like that right now. But I can crochet a few things, you know, and give her some stuff for her booth, and then, uh, you know, she sells them. I split the money with her. Uh, but, you know, maybe I'll go and just sit and hang out. I don't know. I got to see um, what's going on. I think it's at the end of September. 
And so right now I can't go anywhere until I get my car serviced. Then I have a trip that's right after that. And so then it would be like, and then I have people in Spokane wanting me to come back there before winter hits. And, you know, and I've got to start getting wood. i got to start getting ready for winter if I'm going to be here for another winter. Like, look, there's just like everything is so like, you know, so weird. You just don't know. You just everything. It's like no matter even having a house it is still like they're taking people's homes uh, like one after another. They just fucking go in from the sky and just zap them. So, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, to sit around and think, well, you know, I'm better than everybody else. I got a house. I've got nothing to worry about. That just seems like my ego, uh, if that were the case, I'm way more like, fuck, anything can happen. You know, anything can happen at any moment and we don't know what's going to happen. And even when we get hit hard to remember, like there, they need to have some heroes out there. And so, so even if, you know, you're awake and you get it, you know, everything going on and you, cause a lot of times it's like, well, I already know all this stuff. I'm already awake. So I don't really need to be hit hard by something horrific. I've already gone through my horrific thing. So, uh, you know, but I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what's going to go down. I don't know if they're going to come in and blow up my goddamn neighborhood. I mean, they do all these things that kind of is always showing like uh, they could come in with these weird storms, these weird weather pattern things, uh, spraying, all this. Uh, I don't know. I don't just, but you, you can't sit here. Like I can't get up every day and go, okay, well, it could kill us, but I still don't know. It's like, you got to live your life. You can't sit there and stress out and stress out. But you have to have awareness of it. It's all about this balancing, you know. And if you notice, like, that you are becoming paralyzed, then you got to be like, okay, well, you got to live your life, too. You know, life is ending for a lot of people. And it's not, it's just this one. It's just this experience. It's not all of life. All of, you know. But... The people who are here with us that we thought we we're going to be with for longer. You know, a lot of people are leaving. A lot of people are, um, you know, leaving the, leaving the show. So, you know, it is a huge part of appreciation and appreciation of your time, appreciation of your people. Uh, and, you know, I think there's going to be some lessons for people who haven't had appreciation, too. There's going to be some, there's, there's, it's, everything is about the lessons. Everything's about what people are learning from what's going on. And uh, there's just, there's so much. It's just so crazy. Like, gosh, the Hawaii thing, that is just so crazy how much stuff. How, oh my gosh. But to me, it is like, it's like the main, it's like the main show. It's like. It's showing us so much. It's giving so much right now. It, it, it's crazy. And uh, such a huge thing about the tourism and stuff. All of that coming out. And uh, just how the people just keep on wanting to go. Not even caring about the people who live there. It's just... Uh, and there's just I, a lot of people who were living there who, you know, were just are probably ignoring a lot of things that were going on in the world. And, you know, all, there's just, everything is, there's just so much stuff. There's so much stuff and it is so, it's energy weapons directed at each person, really. Each person has their own shit that's blowing up in their lives to impact them in a certain way so that they go through certain things so that certain things come up in them so that they can heal it. So it's all very, um, you know, intricate. So everything that is going on with each person, she keeps being so uncomfortable. And I don't know if it is the energy. Uh, she wasn't taking any medicine. Now all of a sudden she keeps taking some, but like all night we're up, up, up. And now it's almost five in the morning. And I'm going to try and just do some crocheting today. 
but everything I put on is just like, is um, everything just seems intense. It seems loud. It seems like, ah, oh. and then just going walking with her. And then she starts stopping and pulling on me. It's like, oh my God, I'm gonna go crazy. Everything feels so intense. So I, you know, I can see, you know, the people who aren't healing, you know, why they're taking their clothes off and running around doing crazy shit is because they got to feel so uncomfortable. And I am just can't even believe how many people keep being confrontational. This is not the time to be confrontational. Like people legitimately are not, it's like people have checked out. They're just a bunch of fucking, you know, zombies going around, not thinking for themselves. And uh, this is not the time to be going in and fighting with people over stupid ass shit. But, you know, it's, it's their own soul stuff working out from other times that they did stupid ass shit to each other. So and there's going to be crazy shit. It's going to keep playing out. And just because crazy shit keeps playing out doesn't mean that it's going to happen to you. And it doesn't mean you have to participate. You can stay an observer. Just, uh, you know, we've got the watchers all around us. Go in and just start talking to them. I talk to them sometimes just about, like, that kind of stuff. Like, oh, my God. Like, what? I, but uh, the more you talk to them, the more you will recognize their voices. The more you'll hear. And I'm telling you, it is just... It's a quietness. It is, and it's towards the back. It's always in the back of the room, and it is quiet. You have to get through the noise in your mind and battle through all of that to get to that higher mind where they will sit and talk to you about smart things that are, you know, as I feel like, you know, a lot of the things that they show me and tell me, it's like I'm being showed and told. It's not like I know every fucking thing. It's just that they um, they show me and tell me things, and I understand them. They make sense to me. Um, so, anyways, I just feel like that they're there for everybody. It's but it's everybody's own development of that relationship. You have to put in the effort. You have to, and it may start out, you know, with just desire. Of I really want to be able to talk to my guides more. I want to be able to hear them better. I want to be able to hear my ancestors better. And so then you just got to start going through the noise in your mind. The voices that are the loudest. And start quieting those ones. And, you know, talk back to them. Find out what they want. What are they doing there? What are they trying to show you? And you'll get to it. Like, it's in there. You just, I don't think you can be a soul and not have communication. It's just that there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of interference. And so it's, it's, um, and people have just not learned to manage their mind. I mean, there's fucking adults who think that they can't learn to read cursive. It's like, you can read, you can learn to read cursive. You can, you just start reading it. <laughs> uh, so I mean, teaching us when we're five or six years old, you can learn how to read it at any point in time. <laughs> so it's just all this, this is just a ludicrous world, it's ludicrous bullshit. It's, it's mental. And people, uh, people can be told that they can't do something and they'll just be like, well, you know, I just can. Well, I got the diagnosis. <laughs> well, I'm going to get the medication and coming up with a medication for me. So I'll get that. It's like, oh my gosh. Okay. Well, anyway, so today I will try and be more productive and crochet some granny squares. Maybe I'll have some granny squares to show you tomorrow. Or maybe I won't get it done at all and I'm setting way too high expectation for myself. Because I know I'm not the only one who is going through this like, fuck. Like, God damn. It just feels like everything is so hard to do. Like, Fuck. And I've heard other people saying is like um, where people are saying like they just feel too tired, like they can't do things. It just feels too exhausted. And that is what, you know, it feels like you're trying to trudge through this heavy density or something. It just is like, oh, my gosh, it's heavy. But it is like if we're energetically pushing on that uh, 
You know, we got to take turns. We can't just, you're going to exhaust yourself. You just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And sometimes you got to just step back. And like right now, you know, I mean, YouTube has taken away my um, followers faster than they can go on. And um, fucking TikTok, I mean, it's so absurd. It's just outrageous. Can't even believe I can go do fucking a video in that two minutes. It can get all of the action. Then all of a sudden it's like, well, it didn't get enough. So it's just not going to go further. <sighs> so, um, you know, but the pushing and pushing. Sometimes it's just like, I just don't even want to fucking say anything. I just don't even want to be bothered. Because it's like energetically you're pushing and pushing and pushing. And, uh, but anyways... So we are pushing on that door. It will go. All of this will fall down. All of the dark. And there will be a lot of people are going to go flying in and fall flat on their faces. And, uh, you know, there will be a, an abrupt kind of, even though all this is going slow, I just feel so sure that we are going to have an abrupt moment where we're going to know things are definitely going the other way. And, that, you know, supposedly Trump is uh, dropping all sorts of hints and stuff and saying, you know, uh, big things are going to happen this week. Big things are going to be going down and big names and stuff. And there has been so many, uh, you know, people going down and stuff. So it really is. I mean, I mean, for sure, the shit is really going on. It's just so slow. It's just so slow. But. Like, there's a reason it's got to be slow because it's more effective. The slower it goes, the more people wake up, the more people are impacted. So, anyways, it's um, that's the way it is. And we'll just have to keep watching how this is going to play out in Hawaii. Like, even if you send things, they won't give them the things. You go through Red Cross or anything, it's already been proven. That money just circles right around and you know, in a laundry. It just goes and goes and goes and goes. This shit. You go do the GoFundMe, they do the same thing as that they did it in Canada. Just, well, we're not going to give it to them. Yeah, we got well, how many of our money was for those truck drivers? Well, nope. We're just going to keep that. We're gonna start. They've done that for so many different ones. Like, to me, it would keep being shown that they're in complete control and that we want to go in and rush and help somebody, but they're going to keep controlling it. And they're going to keep taking it. So, uh, to me, I'm, you know, it just is pointless to send something. It's, there's no reason. And all these people, I mean, it sucks. But it, the best thing is, is that these people are going to save themselves. They're going to be their own savior. It's not going to be like, I mean, even the people who are trying to save them can't save them. They're, they're putting all of these supplies in some warehouse and moving them out and all sorts of shit to where they're not even giving them the waters. These people are just, oh God, it's just disgusting. Like that's the Red Cross you want in your fucking disaster. It's fucking sick. So anyways, I just have to keep seeing how it plays out. But on TikTok, it's like every fucking video, every video almost. It's either... Is a big thing that TikTok became. It's just ads. Every fucking person is selling something now. Every fucking person. TikTok shop. TikTok shop. You want to buy a TikTok shop? It's like, oh my god, damn. Everybody's got to hustle. Everybody's got to hustle. I'm selling somebody else's shit. I think better to work on your skills. And I've seen some girls and guys do some crazy shit with um, sewing and upcycling. And those people, to me, those people are going to be, uh, you know, because we're not going to have corporate clothes. We're not going to have slave-made clothes anymore. You're going to be going and paying somebody. And these people who are out there, you know, setting that they're going to be doing really well. Like people who are clothes makers and, uh, and then plus they're like designing, they're coming up with their own designs, their own creations. 
And so I think that those people are going to be in demand. You know, somebody sitting there on their fucking TikTok talking about the toothpaste or whatever. It's like, that's not going to be your... Are you trying to make that your side hustle, whatever? It's TikTok is only doing it because they make so much money off of it. They only give you a tiny, tiny sliver of what they're making. So really, you're just desperate to make a quarter, and you're gonna do whatever you can to make the corporation a hundred bucks. It's like people gotta start seeing through this shit. <laughs> But they're all out there. It's all being purged out right now. It's like a, an excess. I can't even fucking... I'm shocked at some of the... Uh, even some of the um, content creators that I've seen now who... <laughs> it's just... Oh, my God. I, I'll tell you, TikTok, don't even bother approaching me to sell your shit. Because I won't do it. I'm not going to do it on YouTube. And I'm not going to do it on fucking TikTok. No. And so... Anyways, uh, you know, if you're trying to figure out how you're going to make it in this new world, you have something in you, you know, just like my son-in-law has got this drive that he is following. Everybody's got something. You're supposed to be following that. You're supposed to be building your own skills up, like, you know, uh, being innovative, seeing where the world is headed. What do you have to offer? You know, and it's not just selling a bunch of corporate goods online. So, anyways, you know, we'll just, we'll see how everything just keeps going, how it keeps playing out. So, um, but I would, I would submit that it would be a good idea to work on your skills and see what you're good at and, you know, something you're interested in, keep working on it. Become really good at it. Just keep working at it. And even if you fail, and you don't have a good outcome on one thing, don't stop. Don't give up. Just keep on going. And then you're going to find you're the expert at something. So anyways, I'll talk to you later. Bye.